Hey everybody, John Grimsmo here, and today in our ever never-ending quest for making more inlays and installing them, today we're going to talk about how we install the inlays in the handles. And uh, we're going to meet up with Eric in a few minutes, and he's going to tell us how we've been doing it for the past 10 plus years. This knife was made 10 years ago, and then how we're doing it now, we're trying a new way. So in the past, we've always used either super glue or a fancy Loctite glue, we'll show you in a little bit. Um, and I want to experiment with a new method of taping them in using VHB tape from 3M, which is uh, very high bond is what it stands for. And this, is, this kind of tape has been used for all kinds of stuff. It, it's literally how the emblems on your car are stuck to the, to the trunk or whatever. And it's really good in UV. It lasts for many, many, many years, even in harsh conditions. So like for this application, it should be really awesome. So we're gonna walk over to the laser and see how we've been laser cutting these and experimenting with that. And then we'll go meet up with Eric and see how it works. So this knife was made 10 years ago and we've made changes to the Norseman, minor changes, like the whole lock bar shape is different, um, which changes uh, the pivot diameter is different now. We go to a bigger diameter pivot, um, pivot head. So the new inlays are actually, you know, a decent amount bigger than the old ones and just a bunch of little changes. But for the most part, especially on this side, except for the pivot size, um, the inlays are pretty much the same shape they've always been, except we're three machines later on how we make them now. They were originally made on the Tormac and then we made them on the Mori for many years and now we're making them on our Speedio and uh, everything works. So this is a, I think it's 12 by 12 sheet of VHB, um, 467MP VHB tape. There's a couple different numbers. This one's about two and a half thousandths of an inch thick or 2.3 mils or something. Um, so very thin, doesn't add a lot of height, but it adds a lot of stick and a lot of goodness. I actually bought this from digikey.com um, because I couldn't find it anywhere else, but it's like $8 per sheet, all in for that. So we've been experimenting, Angelo, has been experimenting with uh, with Grayson on laser cutting. We're like, yeah, we wanted to so cut them to? out. We don't have any experience lasering paper or this type of material, so we kind of just Googled it, went on um, some websites, got some you know base baseline for us to like start parameters, with. Parameters, because with the laser, you've got what cutting speed, power, and uh, height, focus height. Yeah, right? exactly. So we just dialed it in. Um, obviously, we're a little bit hesitant cutting paper, starting a fire, so we're trying to like figure out you know, the right rate to do the least amount of smoke, basically. Yeah. Um, that and we're cutting into glue. So it's, it, there's a, that glue layer in the middle is potentially flammable. So yeah, we yeah. have to be careful with the speed we go and whatnot. So we're kind of still dialing it in. We're only doing one at a time to dial it in before we run a sheet for safety. Right. Um, and in which case we're probably gonna have a CO2 extinguisher here, be ready just that way everybody's safe. Um, the reflectiveness on this side is different than this side, so it'll actually cut at a different rate. Really? Yeah, the color of the paper makes a difference. If you put like one color to the next, it's going to cut differently. It's kind of uh, different than what we're used to because we're cutting with light, right? Yeah. So everything it, matters. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So um, yeah, um, we put together this router. It's you know been working for us great. The laser does um, more than this. It does the. Can I open it up? Yeah. So we've got our. Um, orange reflective shielding here, which uh, blocks the UV light 450 nanometers. Yeah, about that blue light. Yeah. Um, blue light from that from that specific laser. Yeah. We so had a lot of little guards here. Everything's yeah, like yeah. totally shielded in. Everything so no light comes out of the seams and the gaps and stuff. And then we've got the um, OPT laser mounted, literally magnetically mounted to the head. I think I just turned it off. Yeah, we're gonna start it up again. But yeah, literally it's shooting a laser beam down there, focusing it, the height off the plate makes uh, a focus difference. You literally see the beam size get bigger or smaller. So the guys have been dialing it in. We've got our vacuum chuck here with a Daytron vacuum card and a huge vacuum pump underneath that is sucking the paper down. It's on now. Oh wow. You can hear it change. Um, which uh, keeps the plate, the paper flat because otherwise it like flies all over the place. And because it makes fumes, right? Yep. So we've got our vacuum turned on right now. Yep. Goes to a HEPA dust collector, so yeah. it's, it's filtering out all the all the smoke. So yeah, that's our setup right now. Yep. And as I said, I haven't even seen this burn, yeah. uh, burn tape gonna, yet. You should probably do a video in the future about how, about how the whole thing. Yeah, how it yeah. all works, everything we do in here. Um, we're doing the bulk of our packaging, all our foam is done in here, um, lasering. 
the logos, and now this. So, so it's ready to go. Um, we're doing three passes at a specific, you know, power and, and speed. Okay. And we'll keep dialing that in until we see the least amount of sparking off of the paper. Um, it's actually kind of neat to see when it Is goes. Is it like a lot of power? I think I see 45% yes, power. Yes, 45% power. power at 40 inch a minute. Okay. Seems um, pretty zippy. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll move. Um, yeah. Ready to roll? Yeah. You're going to want to get in close here. There we go. Oh, cool. Let's go. So it looks like it's doing six passes total, like three on one wall counterclockwise, mm -hmm. and then it's going to go three more clockwise. Oh, it's just three. Let's see. Yeah. You really see it sparking, eh? Like yeah. that's that's the glue. And you see the smoke actually coming up a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I think we'll put a flame trap in the uh, when we do this. We'll put a flame trap in the suction. Like there's probably enough of a natural flame trap with the rooting we have, but might as well be safer. Think there's a way to do it in one pass and get it to to work? We we tried to like really look like it was gonna catch on fire. Yeah. Yeah. So we like played until we. Sure. You see it sparking, and you can actually see it sparking like on the underneath of the paper and like go out. It's pretty like that. You saw right there. So we think that's the glue. Yeah. Yeah. We want process reliability here, yeah. even if it takes longer. You see it sparking underneath, like going into the other line? Yeah. So yeah, I was thinking speed it up, do more passes. Um, basically, you don't want to see that, like that. Like too flickering much. like yeah. that? Yeah. But yeah, the first few times it was pretty scary. Because really you're cutting through paper, glue, glue, and then more paper. Membrane, and then glue on the other side, yeah. and then more paper. Okay. Like whatever the BHB is made of. Unless it's just glue and glue. It's just I don't know. glue, I don't know. Yeah, curious. It's really thin though. Yeah, works great. And then we'll nest a whole sheet. Once I dial in the parameters, um, we'll nest in a whole sheet. And yeah. then I feel like to start, we should probably have somebody like monitoring well, like, it. I mean, at this speed, we're at, where are we at so far? Two minutes almost, yeah. almost three? Yeah. Um, a whole sheet would take like an hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've definitely seen, uh, maybe we can pull it up and add it to the video. I saw this video on YouTube of some factory or whatever that does this. They actually unroll it, they go through the laser, and yeah. they peel the, the shell away. Yeah. Um, and it's just like brr, 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 smoke everywhere. It's like so fast. Can we smell it? Oh yeah, it smells like burning paper. Yeah. Through the paper, okay. Okay. Cool. So I mean, the goal with these is that they just peel right out. Like you can see, they kind of just pop out. Um, yeah, we're trying to find that perfect balance of pretty much perforated. So that way it doesn't go through the sacrificial yeah. paper and yeah, into our table. Go. I'm able to. That's awesome. And then see underneath right here? We're just cutting into the paper, which is fine. Yeah. I don't mind. Yep. Um, you have to, to be able to get all the way through. Otherwise, you're not getting all the way through. Cool. Yeah, you can see this one here has done a bunch. Yeah. And it's, a, it's starting to go through that. So there'll be a life on that paper. Yeah, it's actually not that deep, but it's just part of it. Yeah. Cool, cool. All right, how about we uh, jump over to Eric and see how they're using these? Hello. 
What's up, Eric? Not much. How's it going? Going good. <laughs> Tell me about how we've always glued in inlays. Um, yeah, so with the inlays, we've always used some sort of glue. Uh, we've landed on the Loctite 380, the Black Max. Uh, it seems to work the best for what we need. It like kind of fills the gaps and uh, just holds really, really strong. How is it different than super glue? Like everybody's used clear super glue, right? <clears throat> right. So I think this has some sort of like a filler in it that you know fills the gaps. So you know you don't have to have a perfectly you know smooth finish or anything. Um, and it's black, right? It's black. Yeah. Like it's kind of rubbery, isn't it? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. It's. Like the clear super glue is like very runny and very just watery, yeah. whereas this is quite thick. If you can get in on that. And like I always thought of the, the clear glue as being basically brittle when it's dry. So yeah, it's almost like paint. This kind of stays flexible? Yeah. Yeah, actually, that's I think what I'm thinking. that's probably the, the part that makes it work so much better because the other stuff, it'll just, like, if you shock it, it'll pop yeah. off. Yeah, when we were using just CA super glue, uh, we did have a couple inlays pop out from customers, just a couple over the first few years, um, which sucks. That's no fun. And I'm pretty sure it was uh, knife maker Todd Begg that suggested this to us yes. like 10 plus years ago. Yes. So shout out to Todd. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Um, yeah, so what are your thoughts on the VHB tape? So far, I like it. Yeah. Um, we have the first set here that I believe have been taped in. Okay, like fully production ready. Yep. Nice. Yep, so Gabe did that while I was in Boston. Boston? Yeah. Um, seems to look good. Seems to have worked. Now, the cool thing with these, if they hold, which they should, um, is the cleanup. Like with the tape, you can just peel it off, stick it in, put the inlay in, maybe clamp it or something, and then it just holds. Whereas with the glue, you have to put it in, like, you know, glue the whole surface, squidge it in, clamp it, and then all the glue kind of like the excess glue comes out because you don't want to put too little glue in so it just pops out on the customer. So you'd rather put too much. <laughs> exactly. So you try not to put too, too much on, but... That's yeah. why you buy, like, bulk packs of Q-tips. <laughs> yep. So then you're just stuck, you know, cleaning around and around and around the inlay with, you know, a Q-tip full of acetone after Q-tip full of acetone, just, okay. like, going and going and going until you get no more black Sounds on the like Q-tip. Yeah, super fun. I mean, it's the one nice thing about the black is you can tell oh, when it's point. completely clean. Does it take a while to dry? Um, like super glue dries pretty quick. Your Q-tip would be stuck there. Uh, you know? Yeah, it, you can hold it for I think 15 seconds and it sets. Okay. But then it cures in 24 hours. Oh, okay, so it takes a while. Yeah, so I do like to clamp them for a while. Yeah. But in 15 minutes they're, or yeah, 15 seconds they're okay. good to kind of let go. And yeah, the one thing Gabe mentioned to us on mo the Monday meeting when. He said he put that together, or he was testing or something. He said you kind of only have like one shot, one opportunity to seize everything you've ever wanted. Ah. <laughs> because like once it touches, you can't you can't pull it out. You can't like try again. Right. It's like it's like get it right okay. first try. Whereas um, with the glue, you can kind of press it in, and if it doesn't work, you can poke it out really quick okay. and you know reset it if you need to. Yep. And that's okay. the other thing. Like in on these handles, zoom in on those little holes right there. Did this years ago. Um, hold air, hold air, hold air, hold air, hold air. The theory being that um, if we ever want to poke, poke the inlay out, we just poke a little drill bit in there or something, and then the inlay will pop out. Um, with the VHB, I don't know if it's going to hold so well that they just they're not coming out. Yeah. Um, but theoretically, you should never really have to remove them. Well, when we did remove the inlays, we also did soak them in acetone for a while, too, yeah. to loosen it up. So that might work with the tape as well. Okay. You just soak it and then try to poke them. But so soak it and poke it. Yeah, but we but don't know the, yet. the likelihood of having to remove it is, unless somebody wants to re-anodize their handles, which I don't suggest. <laughs> yeah. The other thing, you and I noticed this a long time ago, trying to anodize a handle with carbon fiber already in, remember does what happens? not work. It like soaks up all the electricity into the carbon fiber or something. Because like carbon is conductive, I guess. Yeah. And the colors were totally weird and it like faded around the carbon and it, it just looked bad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think, 
I was even thinking like like would silicone Q-tips help install these somehow where you can like Oh, like poke them down? Poke it and not have to worry about them sticking, something like that. Or not Q-tips, uh, tweezers. Yeah. Um, I don't know, it's the thought I had. Maybe. Yeah, I'll have to give it a shot myself. Yeah. But yeah, made a bunch more inlays for you and uh, more on the way. And then the guys are burning these fast. Yeah. Easy. Um, everything's going good. They smell like burning. It smells like burning, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sweet. And then on this handle, uh, the guys taped in like an inlay just to see, and then another inlay to the backside just to like see how strong it is. And it's like, it's pretty good on there. I mean, maybe you could pry it off if you really, really wanted to, but I'm hurting myself here. It's in there. Nice. Yeah, yeah I, can, I can lift the corner, but I'm hurting my fingernail I'm trying to get it out. Hmm. So it's good, nice. it's really good. Um, and one last thing I remembered about uh, the Black Max versus the tape okay. is with something like Moonglow, it's a bit more of a transparent uh, material. Yeah. If you can see in the middle here, I think you can see a little bit of the Black Max. Well, like it's, it's peeking through. Yeah, through the Moonglow. Well, since we got Moonglow, let's uh, charge it up. Um, but yeah, so hopefully the tape, you know, wouldn't have any of That's that true. result at all. So yep. we could use maybe more transparent materials mm -hmm. and, and not I have a black smudge under it. I forget if I mentioned this already in the video, but um, apparently this is what Chris Reeve and I have uses, uses for their inlays, right. and they have forever, some sort of VHB tape. Um, and I think Sky was saying that whenever customers try to remove a Chris Reeve inlay, they always end up breaking the inlay, hmm. um, which just can't be fun. But... Uh, yeah, that's kind of where we got the idea. We've been chewing on the idea for years and just finally made it happen. Perfect, man. Thank right. you so much. I think that wraps up how we glue in inlays. And uh, I'm so excited to have inlays coming back in the rotation. Yeah. Yeah, they look so good. And they add some like, like thickness to the handle that just, mm -hmm. oh, so nice. Sweet. All right, man. Sweet. Later, guys. Great. See ya.